Yo, what is up programmers, coders, software developers, engineers, people studying to get into the big tech companies because you make a ton of money and that's the only reason people want to work there. But we're gonna, that's what I'm covering, you know? That's what we're trying to figure out here. So we're doing a problem on code signal. I'll link it in the description. Uh, this is array max consecutive ones. All you gotta do is go into the interview practice and uh, yeah, this is asked by Microsoft, LinkedIn, Amazon, and Samsung, apparently, because CodeSignal tells us it is. So we're gonna be doing this problem. It is, uh, my, my videos are not getting, they don't get very good likes, which really stunts the growth of my channel. So it really doesn't, you know, take that much effort. Please, I'm begging you, scroll down, hit the like button. That's all you gotta do. I don't know if that makes people wanna do it less, but I don't know, you gotta try. So please like, and yeah, that's it. We're gonna get into this video. Let's do it. All right, so let's read this problem description. Given an array of integers, find the maximum possible sum you can get from one of its contiguous subarrays. The subarray from which this sum comes must contain at least one element. All right, yo, so we're given this array. We're given an array here and we're concerned about subarrays in this problem. Subarrays are part of an array. The subarray can be one element. It could be two elements. It could be the whole freaking array for all we care, right? One property of the subarrays we're dealing with though is that all of the elements have to be next to each other. So, you know, it can't be two and six. It has to be two, five, negative 11 and six, or just two and five, or the elements just have to be next to each other. We can't just be pulling elements from all over the array. They have to be contiguous next to each other. So we're not looking for a subarray. We're looking for the maximum sum we can get from a contiguous subarray. So a contiguous subarray, there's a bunch of them in this array, right? Here's just some examples here. And the sum of the contiguous subarray is just the sum of all of the elements, right? So the sum of this subarray two is just two because there's one element. The sum of this whole array, which is a contiguous subarray, is negative two plus two plus five plus negative 11 plus six, that's zero. Uh, so we can see this has this already has a better sum. This has a greater sum than the whole array. So this is already, you know, winning here in what we're trying to accomplish. 5 and negative 11 is negative 6. But the main objective still stands. We just want to figure out a way for us to get the maximum possible sum we can get from a particular contiguous subarray, whatever that might be. We don't need that subarray. We just need the max sum we can get from it. So in this case, the maximum contiguous subarray is actually just the elements two, five. Two plus five is seven. That is greater than all of the other contiguous subarray sums. So this is the max contiguous subarray sum. This is what we would return to from our method, right? Our method is returning this sum. All right, so in the interview setting, we're gonna be asked to take our input array and figure out how to solve this function which returns that max uh, subarray sum. First thing that I'm thinking is, okay, we wanna find the maximum, whenever we wanna find the max or a min of something, well, let's generate all of those somethings and then find the maximum of all of those somethings or the minimum of all of those somethings. So brute force is always good because it, it shows your interviewer that you know something, right? You know what's going on a little bit that you can come up with this crappy brute force solution that isn't good enough to land you the position, but it's gonna show you know something, right? It's not gonna leave it awkward. So brute force, okay, we wanna find the maximum contiguous subarray sum in the array. Let's generate all subarrays. Let's look at all subarrays, all of their sums, and then just pick the maximum of all of those. So that's a perfectly valid way to do it. That is our brute force solution. The way we would do that is an O of N squared solution where we're doing a double nested for loop and where we look at, you know, all the rays containing like negative two at first. So we'd look at first array would be just negative two and we'd have a max sum variable that would start at the minimum possible value. We'd look at the sum, we'd have a current array. So the current array, you know, negative two. Then we'd look at, okay, what's the sum of negative two? Negative two. Okay, is that greater than our maximum sum? Yes, because our maximum sum's a min. So now we update our maximum sum and then we look at the next array. The next array containing negative two. The current sum of that array is zero because negative two plus two is zero. Zero is greater than negative two, so we updated our maximum sum. Then we look at the next array, negative two, comma two, comma five. 
and you keep looking at every array that contains negative two, then you look at every array that contains just two, and then we keep going, and eventually we find the pair that has the maximum sum, right? Two, five, that's gonna give us our maximum of seven, and we keep going, and you look at every contiguous subarray, as you go through all of them, you'll eventually just keep updating the max and you'll find the max sum, right? And like I said, it's a brute force O of n squared solution, it's just gonna be two nested for loops, they're gonna say, hey, that, you know, you did it, you solved the problem, but, uh, you know, n squared's pretty slow. That's, you know, if we have a huge data set, that's gonna take forever. Uh, Time-wise, we need this to be faster. Can you come up with a linear runtime solution for us? And you're gonna be like, hell yeah, I can come up with a linear time solution. And here's why, because I watched Nick White's video and he explained it, right now I'm explaining it. So here it is. So the linear runtime algorithm is pretty simple, actually. It's actually easier to code than the brute force one. And the idea here is dynamic pro, it's in the realm of dynamic programming. It's referred to as Cadane's algorithm. It's not complicated at all. Uh, but yeah, you might've heard of this before, but I'm gonna explain it right here. Basically, we have our array and we're gonna start off and basically we're just gonna loop through it, right? We're gonna loop through it one by one, starting from the first element. And we're just gonna say, what is the maximum up what is the maximum sum up to this point what is the maximum sum up to this point what is the maximum sum up to this point and we're going to decide whether to add the next element onto that sum or to start a new sum with that current element and yeah that's basically it i think the best way to show you is an example so the maximum sum of contiguous subarrays up to this point is uh, just negative two, because there's only one element. So we'll set the initial sum. Our initial max is negative two, our initial current sum is negative two, and we're looking at just an array of negative two. So at each step, we're going to have the current sum take the maximum of these two options, right? So the options are to start a new sum, where this would just be our array, starting with just two, or our subarray would be negative two, two, which would have a sum of zero. So two is greater in this case. So our current sum is gonna be the max. So that's gonna be set to two. And then also each time we're gonna say, oh, is our current sum greater than our maximum sum? Well, we have to update that as well. So up to this point, we know that the maximum sum of contiguous subarrays is two. Now on to the next, and we, you know it's linear because we've only gone from here to here. Now going here, do we want to start in A, add five onto our subarray because we know two is fine. We started a new one, we had two. Let's put five on there. Do we want to do two and five, which has a sum of seven, or do we want to start over and just have five, which has a sum of five? Well, seven is greater than five, so we're gonna go with two, five. So we update our current sum. Current sum is always the max of these two choices. So current sum is seven, is that greater than the max? So seven was greater than two, so we update our max to seven. So up to this point, the maximum of all the contiguous subarrays is seven. So now we're gonna go to negative 11. Now, do we want to A, add negative 11 onto our current subarray or start over with a new sum? So the sum of this is gonna be negative 11 plus seven. So the sum of this first array is gonna be negative four and this is gonna be negative 11. So negative four is greater than negative 11. So the current sum is the max of those. So the current sum is gonna be negative four. Is negative four greater than our max sum? Did we find a new max? No, we did not. So we're gonna move on to the next. So up until this point, seven is still the max of all the contiguous subarrays. Let's move on to this last element, six. So do we wanna add six onto our current subarray or do we wanna start over? Well, the sum of this is gonna be two and the sum of this is gonna be six. So six is greater than two. So it's gonna be six. We're gonna start our new sum, although we're at the end of the array, so it doesn't even matter. Current sum will be set to six. And is six greater than our max sum? No, max sum was seven the whole time. From once we saw that two and five, max sum hit seven, hasn't been updated since. That's it, we're done with the loop. We Whatever we have now is our maximum sum, max contiguous uh, subarray sum, and yeah, that's what we return. So let's look at this in code so you can kind of visualize how this looks a little bit better. It's actually pretty easy. You know, labels on these algorithms like Cadane's algorithm can be pretty intimidating or something like that, but it's not, it's not difficult at all. All right, so here's the code for our algorithm. Uh, the max sum and the current sum are both set to the first element, and then we start looping from the second element, so the first index in the array. Uh, a current sum, okay, we're looking at that element. Do we want to add that onto our subarray, or do we want to start a new sum? So whatever the max sum of those are is what we're going with. So current sum is set to the max between 
adding the next element with what all what, what we already have so adding that next element onto our sum what's greater this or just starting a whole new sum over again so it takes the max of those and then max sum if if the current sum is greater than the max sum we just update the max sum that we do that over and over again we've just walked through the whole example and then we return the max sum very straightforward i think this is a good problem to illustrate kadane's algorithm uh there's also dynamic programming approaches that are almost the exact same as this but this is the optimal solution in this case and knowing it isn't too much to ask for in an in interview uh there are definitely probably more complicated variations than this that you can be asked but this is probably one of the most simple uh variations so that's it for this uh algorithm tutorial this could come up in a interview this is probably a good question to ask in an interview i would say yeah and now hopefully you can go in at amazon or samsung or whatever the hell the other ones were that we were talking about in the beginning and be like yo you're coming at me with this weak crap here i already know this kadane's algorithm do i want to start the sum over do i want to expand the current sum it's that easy and then you get the max sum of all of that stuff so that's pretty much it for this problem. Please, once again, leave a like because it helps the channel out tremendously. I really appreciate everyone that watches. Channel's doing good, growing. I got my Patreon in the description where I have a study guide, mostly like lead code hack. I actually have a lot of resources that I uh, like to use when I was studying. If you want to go uh, check that out um, and join the Discord. Everyone's in the Discord. We hit over a thousand people in the Discord and you know I got other stuff down there too. So. Thank you guys for watching. I will do some more problems soon. Comment below any ideas you have uh, or problems you want me to do. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace. Okay, I forgot to explain exactly why this works perfectly. The whole idea here is we can look and choose to start the sum over because if adding the new element onto the current sum is going to be less than just starting over, then while we keep going, if we keep going after that and we keep adding elements on, it's always going to be less if we chose to just add the element on, then starting over. Because starting over is greater, and we've already, we're done looking at everything before it. For example, if when we're looking at a negative two, we don't want our array to be negative two, two. We just want to start over at two, because if we have an array negative two, two, and then five, right? We're just having a negative two for no reason. Then when we could start over with a two, then go to five, then negative 11. You always want to start over because you're just hindering yourself by not starting over. If this sum is c greater than the combination of these nu the numbers before, there is absolutely no reason to keep the numbers before because you can only increase from starting over. Hopefully that made good sense, but also I have to do this because people will say, oh, dude, it doesn't work. It will work, you know, it works. Okay, all the test cases passed, 300, 300, 11 out of 11. It's very popular. It's on Lee Code. It's on HackRank. This is a very famous problem. This is how you do it. Do, you don't have to question things. People also said hash maps, I mean hash sets don't, the contains method is constant time. Just so you guys know, a lot of you are saying that contains is linear because you have to search through. No, contains is constant time for hash sets and hash maps. So there we go. All right. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.